if I want a job interview, I can't dress like I want to dress. I got to get a suit. So the same thing in your mind. If you want better, you can't use old keys to open new doors. Antoine, at one point in your life, you were homeless? Yes, I was. Okay. And at another point in your life, you were making six figures plus a year? Yes, I was. Okay. Maybe you can take us through both times in your life and how they intersected. That was a great couple first questions. I like it. Oh, good. Okay. Um, homeless. Um, I came from humble beginnings, raised in Southside Jamaica, Queens, and had the best mom and has the best dad. Um, when you're younger, you get mad at them. But that when you get older, you realize that they were trying their best and they were broken. They were going through their own internal demons. So around 20, that's around 20, um, I basically left the house because at the time, my mom, she's not here no more. She chose her boyfriend over her kids. So I left the house, was homeless for like a year and a half. And I started a job um, working in New York. And that was a moment that I realized that you gotta do better. You can't let your past determine your future. And you gotta turn your pain into purpose. So I went through all that trials and tribulations, work on myself, work on my trauma, to heal myself, get myself better. And now, today, I'm just an amazing man um, I was working in New York in the hotel industry, making six figures a year. But six, everybody living in New York know that six figures a year is nothing. And I wasn't happy. And some of my friends like, you make six figures, you have a good job. What are you, what are you doing? Money don't bring happiness. Internally, I had a battle that I could do more in life. So I used my job. I basically used my job as my passion to fund my dreams. So I didn't want to do the whole freelance working in the film industry. I didn't want to do that because I, it's like I had a job. So I tell everybody, you need a job and a dream. I let my job be my investor to help me fund my company, um, Answer and Films, and um, the best decision I ever made. Okay. Do you mind if we go back to when you were 20 for yeah, a little while? Yeah. Okay. And, and forgive me if I get too personal and no, we don't have to answer. Okay. Okay, um, and, and I we appreciate that, and mm -hmm. um, I know that's asking a lot. That was not to go. Okay, well, for Thanks. for me it would, but yeah, okay. Um, so when you were when you were twenty and you decided to leave and you saw, okay, this is this is what my life is, and and I need to do what I need to do for myself. Um, did you have an idea about making films at that time, or you were just looking at survival? At that if time? someone told me I'd be doing what I'm doing now, I'll laugh in their face. Because when you come from the inner city, especially where I came from, Jamaica, Queens, you're in survival mode. So there I was trying to get a job, not go to jail, not get murdered. So I could, around that time, a lot of my friends went to jail, got murdered, or just went somewhere else that I didn't want to go. So I was in survival mode. Um, I didn't start getting into the film business probably around 28, 29, seriously. Because from there, I was in the music business. I was managing artists, directing music videos. But when you deal with hip hop artists, especially in the inner city, it, a lot of them was going to jail, getting caught up. So if you're a manager, if they stop, your career stop. So from there, I say, you know what? I'm not reaching my full potential. So I did start doing music videos. But music videos was the same thing. I had a big imagination. But at the time working with the artists, they didn't have the budget. So I said, let me do a short film. I did my first short film called Split Decision. It was a female boxing film. I funded it myself working my regular nine to five job. And so let me invest in myself. Because coming from the film business, when the big record labels say no, that the rappers and the producers were selling out their trunk on a, on a treat because we didn't wait for big major labels. We validated ourselves. That's why I got it, the whole validate yourself in the music industry because that's where you came from. And once I did my short film, I was like, wow, I did this. And it won so many awards and I was happy. And I said, this is what I want to do, tell my stories use my imaginations. I don't need a degree. I don't need a lot of money. I just need to execute. And that's, yeah, that's what happened. So you were working in the hotel uh, industry, like hospitality management? Yeah, I was doing that and I was doing security. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you remember when you gave your two weeks notice? Because you were going from that to the music industry? Yeah, so no, I was still working. So through my whole career, I always had a job because I didn't want to do freelance. So I worked security and retail. I did private investigation. If you think your husband or wife is cheating, I did that. And I almost became a cop, but I didn't do it. But the whole time I had a job because I hate relying on another person to give me money 
and do the whole free, like the freelancing is I didn't like it. So I, I worked my nine to five job, during my nine to five job, after my work, I did my, it's 25 hours in a day. A lot of times people say, we don't have time. You have time. You just got to make time, prioritize your time. So when you were dealing with hip hop artists, mm -hmm. were you able to see some of the um, the life situations that were maybe pulling them down? Yeah. That, yeah. that you remembered? For, and, and how were you able to maybe, either you didn't try to help them, you stayed out of the way because it was a business relationship, mm -hmm. or it crossed over because it was the whole package? Yeah, I try to help. Because I was doing my own trauma myself. I was trying to help, but you know, it's just like you have friends and family. Only so much you could do. They got to help themselves. So I was working on myself getting better, but they were still stuck. And I could have helped them because, like I said, I wasn't rich. I hadn't known it. A lot of times in the, in the city, we don't do financial, racism, a whole bunch of stuff. So I could have helped. And a lot of the guys that I was working with, you know, some of them went to jail and some of them not here no more. Did you see a lot of very talented people very talented. burn out and not very be able talented. to? I tell people all the times, coming from a drug area, and you see a lot of drug dealers, it's tons of Bill Gates, it's tons of Steve Jobs, but they didn't have the opportunity. So if you could hustle a neighborhood and make all this money, you could run a company. It's the same thing. It's just a different product. But they didn't have the opportunities. So that's why. For me, I decided that I don't want to go down another route. I want to go another route. And I chose, let me just stay this path, let me get this nine to five job, let me do auto and I job, and eventually will work out. What's it like to lose everything? It's just uh, humbling. And um, at first, you get sad, you get depressed, but then the older you get, you realize that you don't know what you had because you never had nothing in the beginning. So that's what, that's, so it was, it was, I didn't feel like I had anything, I was just surviving mode. And what changed? Uh, I had to reprogram myself. Um, when you coming from that environment, um, you don't know if you poor because everybody else around you poor, so you think it's normal. But once I realized I want more out of life, that's when the light bulb. So my security job I was working with, I usually work in the neighborhood, but then I started getting contracts in Manhattan. And Manhattan is a melting pot. You see different things. That's why I tell everybody, take your kids, they can explore the world. Because when I was growing up, all I knew was up the block. And up the block, I didn't want to go up the block because there was so much damage going up the block. But um, once I started working in Manhattan, my eyes started opening. I started meeting different people, seeing different people in different tax brackets. I was like, wow, this, this is a better life out there. And like anything, a lot of times we don't upgrade our mind. We upgrade our clothes, we upgrade our, our phone, but we don't upgrade our mental. So when I start reprogramming myself and went more in my life, that's when things start changing. And I start healing my pain and my trauma. Because when you heal, you see different, you spell different, you react different. Um, and that's where it's thought. The start is I wanted more out of life. So do you think the the old Antoine could have been making these films and, and producing no. them and bringing a team together? No, he, he, he's probably in jail right now. <laughs> Why? Because when you don't have no foundation, so a lot, of, a lot of times you see those kids in the news and they do bad things, get locked up, but we're so quick to judge people, but we don't know their story. A lot of those kids, there's no other way. I mean, now it's different. Now you have no excuses. There's too many options right now. But back then, in the early 2000s, especially early 90s, I grew up in 80, I'm born in 81, I'm 40 now, but there's no options. So sometimes we're quick to judge people, their situation, but a lot of times it's the home environment. So if the foundation is broke, you don't know what. So when I see kids now, they got both parents, got everything, and they still acting, that's something's wrong. That's, that's, that's a whole different situation right there. But um, but yeah, just, you know, it, it, that person would never. So sometimes you gotta kill the old you to have to be the person you wanna be. How do you reprogram your mind? It's hard, um, but you gotta do it. So I think the first time where it was is I had a few of my friends pass and go to jail. And I was asking myself, like, what, how can I get out of this? Like, what could I do to make things better? And I kept it simple. If I want a job interview, I can't dress like I want to dress. I got to get a suit. So the same thing in your mind. If you want better, you can't use old keys to open new doors. You got to start thinking different. You got to start loving yourself more. A lot of times we settle for less. We do 90%. We give it to everybody else and we get the crumbs. So I had to reverse that. Love myself more, do more for myself, and I do less for everybody else. 
a lot of times we help, 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 help everybody else and we left with nothing. So I tell people have a balance. If you're an actor, if you want to spend 90% in the casting room, you basically giving an individual control of your whole life. Split it up. But start writing your own films. Start producing your own films. And th- like give your life a balance. A lot of times we give, 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 and we don't give nothing to ourselves. And so with the reprogramming, do you ever feel sometimes the old mindset creeping back in? No, I killed that person. No, I don't even want to go back. Because <laughs> that old mindset was I was broken. And I ain't had no one to talk to. And I didn't have a great family because they was broken, the blindly and the blind. So no, that person never come back. I use that old person as motivation to go forward. 